Thank you. My name is Mike. Uh, I work for Midland Valley Exploration. It's a small company based in Glasgow, and we do software for uh, the geological industry. Uh, and part of what we have to do is uh, display map data. So I'm going to go through a couple of techniques uh, of how you do that, uh, mostly in a QML application. Uh, first way is uh, not very innovative, uh, but is to use WebView and Google Maps. Um, Basically, the technique is based on something that was demoed in QT Labs a while back when they first uh, had uh, WebKit in QT. Uh, this is doing it in uh, QML, so essentially you have a full web view um, and you display Google Maps. It works out of, out of the box. You don't need anything uh, else than what comes with QT. Um, one word of caution, it's experimental. You're going to be uh, using experimental QT code, so the API will change or get dropped or you know, your own risk. It requires a server. The page on which you are going to put the Google Maps code in the HTML code needs to be on a server for Google Maps to validate your, uh, the code. Uh, but other than that, ent integration is very easy. You use a web view. You can overlay your QML and do something very, very easy and quick. Um, so basically, I'm not going to run the demo because uh, I haven't uh, set up the Wi-Fi on, on this. But screenshot, your, this is a full screen uh, QML app with a full screen web view. And I'm overlaying some buttons in it. And on those buttons, I can do some JavaScript call to control the WebKit uh, and the Google Maps view. So if I click on the Berlin button, I can zoom this view so that it zooms into Berlin. I can also use the map, Google Maps uh, API to overlay some pins. There's a little pin appeared there in the middle of uh, signaling where we are. Um, you can also overlay some images. In this particular case, it's just overlaying some, uh, Im some image on the, on the map. Um, so this is not QML, it's actual Google Maps. So if you had an image that was an enhanced street map or something like that, you could overlay on that and it would be mapped uh, or linked properly on the right, uh, right location. Uh, you can also go ahead using some QML, sort of simple slider, go and control the transparency. Uh, of that image. <laughs> and then you can use the regular uh, Google Maps uh, interface to go and change that to satellite <coughs> image, or you can decide to hide them all and do your own QML uh, UI. So very easy to do. You do that in just a few lines of, um, of uh, QML. So you import your WebKit, your WebKit experimental, and the only reason you need that is to get your QML to talk to the JavaScript engine that's running in, inside uh, WebKit. Um, and so you point it to the page that you've set up on your server where you're using the Google Maps API to display uh, your data. I'm not going to go into the details of that. It's all very well documented on the web. Um, a few things to add at the bottom. You want to be able to uh, talk to the JavaScript engine, and you also Google Maps sometimes, when it doesn't get the user agent string of a valid web browser, it restricts uh, what the Google Map actually can do. So you just pretend to be somebody you're actually not. Um, and then basically on the, on the buttons, on the mouse area, on the unclicked, you're going to use these webview.experimental.evaluate JavaScript to run some JavaScript. And this call, in this case, I'm running this, this JavaScript function, view all, and I give it the lat long range of things where I want to zoom into a specific area. That will, in turn, use the Google Maps JavaScript API to center on the right place. Uh, word of caution, in this case, you see I've quite useful. I've, I've put this function to do the calls to JavaScript, to the Google Maps JavaScript API. It's quite useful to wrap up these calls because Google Maps has the tendency of evolving the API and deprecating the old ones. If you do that, you just need to change the code on your web page. All the all thousands of apps that have shipped already and our users are there will automatically become, will remain valid because you can change that web page without having to reinstall the app. Second call displays an image. So again, very useful uh, if you can live with a constraint of being able to work only online. Um, which uh, is something that was a big problem for us, so we decided to use another technique, which is a lot less simple. Uh, we use a library called OpenSceneGraph. 
so that's a 3D library um, uh, that does OpenGL calls, and it has a plugin called OSG Earth, which is capable of loading uh, geological type or geographical type data. Uh, what we do then uh, is use the standard way of integrating OpenGL with QML, i.e. we're rendering our QML on the background of your QML app, um, and all your other QML is just drawn on top of it. So think of QML as being the ultimate HUD head-up display. So <coughs> you've just got your OpenGL in the background. Uh, OSG Earth is actually quite smart. It can handle all you know, all different types of data, whether they're online data or on your device uh, data. Uh, for the online data, you can actually cache it locally so that it will still work afterwards. Uh, and then you can provide your own maps, uh, things that are on, on your device. So the way we integrate it uh, is doing, do you, you building this app. Uh, I'm doing another talk tomorrow morning at 9 if you want to um, know more about how it's done. But basically, you have standard map data uh, we can overlay your own images on site on top of that data. Zooming in, you can draw uh, your own data. So you'll see along the shore, there's lots of little markers, which is what the geologists go out in the field to measure. And then you can do things like integrating uh, together QML and this OpenGL map. So it's little, this little call out that appears when you select one of the data, that little bubble there, that's done in QML. And when you pan the map, you just uh, pan that, that piece of QML with the map at the same time. So this is, uh, as I said early on, built with um, Open Scene Graph and uh, OSG Earth. There's a huge amount of dependencies. Bading, uh, building this cross-platform for iOS and Android is not for the faint of heart. Um, it's really yeah, not easy. But the whole setup afterwards is not too complicated. Uh, we have a class, a geo renderer. Uh, we tell it a few things uh, to do what the GL, the Q Quick View does is that it can send you an event when it's time to do open GL calls. Uh, so we hang in, we uh, do a direct connection to that signal. And in there, uh, we clear the open GL state, tell open scene graph to do its rendering. That's what this dot frame call does. And then clear the, um, the state back uh, so that QML can draw properly afterwards. Some details about um, the OSG Earth. OSG Earth is actually very, or Open Scene Graph, sorry, is very uh, capable library. It's designed to do virtual reality in caves and things like that. So it has a, its own abstractions of screens and uh, graphical contents and all of that. Uh, but it's also uh, very useful for us because you can load up your own, uh, your own um, shaders and do a whole bunch of things. Loading maps, so that's an OSG Earth API, so you define a map and then you define a number of layers. You can do uh, online layers. In this case, I'm rendering OpenStreetMap. Don't do that in your production applications. Uh, but you can also load MB tiles, which is basically a cached tile data. You'll need to learn a whole bunch of things about um, uh, transforming coordinates of lat longs to screen coordinates uh, to world coordinates and back. And that's how you do the tracking of the QML. Um, displaying those symbols, we do that essentially using uh, shaders. Uh, we build one texture with all the little symbols that we need to use, and we build, we display one mesh with uh, two triangles for each of those symbols. Um, and basically, we um, we send them across uh, that way. Lines um, are done similarly uh, with shaders, so we calculate an offset. One of the things we're doing with symbols uh, and with lines is that we are drawing them at a constant pixel size. So no matter how far or how close you are, they're always the same size. So we need to do that in, um, in our vertex shaders. Uh, QML, um, again, so we do when you pick a symbol, we note the, the screen position of that symbol, and as you pan, we just move it across. So the thing to note for this is that essentially it's a 3D technique. In this case, we're doing maps, and we see we locked to see it in 2D. Uh, but you can load your own images like that. But you can also, if you have the elevation data, you can drape it on a surface. And if you saw the map jump out to you, it's because it just did jump up several hundred meters there. Uh, but you can also 
tilt it if you if you provide the controls. You have you know a full 3D uh, toolkit to be done. So this is me about displaying maps in QML data.